Hi everyone and welcome to this uh, tutorial which is going to discuss the merits of using our own families versus shaft openings which uh, are the normal way of producing vertical openings. Now the shaft openings um, while being very fast and easy to use have a few limitations. You'll find that if you use the shaft opening in a project you can only actually use it vertically so for example here um, if I place the shaft opening inside the lift core here I would only better actually slice through these floor slabs. The other thing is that it can only cut floors you can't actually cut things like structural framing or foundations. So what I'm going to do first is show you the end results of using your own custom family and then I'll go step by step through how to build this family. So we'll start off by going to the top of foundation plane. You can see here that we have some walls set up and what we need here is an opening. So what we would have done in the past is perhaps we would have gone to the shaft opening command here. Now a couple of things happen with that. When we choose the shaft opening what would happen here is you'd have to create your own boundary line on the modal button here and then you'd have to draw your own symbolic lines. With our family you'll see that we don't have to do any of this. So if I go to component here what we should better do is place on work plane and then drop this down. You can see I've got shape handles on this, so I can just drag it to the references. So we get this set up. Okay, and obviously I'm constraining this, so if I move the walls, which we'll see in a minute, then everything else updates. Okay, so there's the opening in place. You can see we have some various parameters set up here. So I'm just going to go to the opening height, and perhaps I'll start off by making that 10 meters high. Let's now go and take a look at the 3D model, see what we've got. So here we have our shaft, and you can see that's the 10 meter line there. I'm just going to make that a little bit higher. Again, because I've um, used reference lines to actually set this up, you can see I'm seeing shape handles in 3D as well, which is quite convenient. And now to actually cut the openings, the slight disadvantage with this method is I have to manually cut. So I could say I want to cut that slab, this floor here, this floor here, but the big advantage is I can say actually I want to cut this foundation here. Now the only thing is this shaft doesn't go deep enough so all I need to do is select this, change the work plane to the perhaps the lift pit. Okay there it is and now I can go to cut. Okay and we'll just nip this piece out. So that's the advantage of using the system. Now if I go to the first floor plane you can see it's still showing me the cut symbol there. Second floor, I've got the cut symbol as well. And like I say, it's parametric, so that means now if we go back to this floor plane here, and we select the wall, and we move it, yeah, you can see the opening updates as well, which obviously is uh, pretty convenient. Now if I do this this way, what that's going to now do is actually force the cut to enlarge on the foundation. So if we come down and look at the foundation there, you can see we're now nipping out that area there. And of course the same goes for any structural framing. You can see I've got a beam running through here. So if I go to cut, yeah, I can pick the beam, yeah, pick my opening, and you can see that it cuts that beam back. Yeah. Okay, so how do we go about actually building that? Well, what I'll do is I'll show you, um, I'll edit the family so you can see how it's built. Now, the family is actually um, in two stages, stages really. The first stage is we start off by creating a generic model. So we go to File New Family, and in here we'll have Metric Generic Model. And if I open this up, you can see that we have our usual set of reference planes here. Now, what we'd normally do in a normal family is we'd use reference planes to actually frame out and give us our parametric framework. If you want to see shape handles in 3D, which are the little blue arrows that you can adjust, you have to use reference lines. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to set up some reference lines. Now, what I'd normally do with these is just use a control key. So I'm holding down a control key here just to clone them. We'll create another reference line down here. Again, hold the control key down to clone it, like that. And then we can get our dimensions on. Now, I don't want this centered up, 
what I want to do is have this um, as, as a standalone really because if I centre it up here then I'll make it a little bit harder to adjust it to our geometry. So let's now get some um, parameters in this so we'll select one of the dimensions add a parameter now of course if you wanted to schedule this then you'd need to go ahead and make this a shared parameter but I'm just going to use the normal uh, family parameter so we'll call this one opening length and of course it needs to be an instance parameter because each one is going to be different and as we said we want to see our shape handles this one will be opening width like so and that will be an instance parameter OK, I'm just going to give this some starting sizes, so perhaps we'll have a metre by a metre as, it, as the opening here. OK, and we'll just get that roughly centred up in there, just to start. So now that I have that, if I go to my front view, I'm going to create another reference line, which is going to give me my uh, vertical component. So we'll place a dimension in here and we'll add a parameter and this one will be opening height and that's an instance parameter as well so back to the floor plane reference level what we'll do here is create our void form yeah, it does have to be a void form so I'm going to use a void extrusion here but obviously you could use any shape you like um, one of the advantages with this as we've discussed before is this family will be able to be, be used basically um, horizontally as well so if you wanted to put openings through steel beams and, and have the opening symbol show you can use this method so we'll place our geometry in and I'm going to lock this back to those reference lines and finish in the front view, we'll make sure that it's attached to the reference line at the top. Yep, just got to toggle to the padlock there and make sure that this one is also aligned. Now I'm going to go to the reference line and lock that in. Right, so there's our family at the moment. Now, what you need to do to make this work is you'll have to go to your family categories and parameters. You must make sure that it's work plane based. That allows us to place that on faces or work planes that we set up. And you must have cut with voids when loaded. And you must also uncheck always vertical. Otherwise, the opening would only be better to be used like a shaft opening. <coughs> so there are the, the um, important steps we've got to take in family categories and parameters. So work plane based, cut with void when loaded, and remove always vertical. <coughs> so now I'm going to save this. I'll call this one shaft for example and I'll load it into my active project okay so the result of this if we go into the 3d space here to place it of course you'll just use the normal component button here and you can see at the moment on the um, contextual ribbon I have modify place component and a contextual panel is place on face now that means I can place that on any face around the model including curved faces. In the properties palette you can see here I have my um, opening sizes so if I wanted 100 by 100 opening there there it is and if I wanted to put an opening through here I could simply um, pick the face like so okay and there's my opening. Now what I'm going to do with this let's just adjust it so I'll tell you what we'll pick a new face like so and we'll have this go through here somewhere. Let's, um, let's do it like that. Right, so if I'm going to make an opening through the wall there, usual thing, I would say I want to cut. Yep, so that's what I want to cut. That's what I want to cut with. Yep, and there it is. Now, like I say, I can use that on absolutely anything I like. So if I do create similar, and I come along to some framing, so we'll come perhaps down to this level here, select this face here, Okay, there it is. I can just move that into position. Now, obviously, normally you'll be working in a, a slightly better view than 3D for this. This is not that accurate. You can see what the reference lines do. They allow us to um, uh, have the shape handles available, which is quite nice. Um, 
what I'll probably want to do there, if I go to pick new, ideally I'd probably want to pick a face in there somewhere. And of course you can use your uh, nudge keys just to nudge this up and down, which is what I'm doing here. So if I now wanted to cut all that out, yeah, I could very easily go through and start to pick these beams and you can see that it's cutting holes through. So, <coughs> we're almost there. What we'd need to do though is we'd actually need to add in a opening symbol. Now an opening symbol, in its simplest term, is literally just a detail component. So we'll, to make a new one, we'll go to metric detail item and then open. And in here, I'll just use some reference planes just to give me uh, the parametric framework I require. In here, we'll create some detail lines. Now, because this is a 2D family, there's no need to constrain these to the reference uh, lines and reference planes. It should just work itself uh, out for us. We'll put some parameters on. So this one will become opening length and this one will become opening width. Right, so. right, now, I want to better control the visibility of these, so what I'm going to do is actually make sure they're on their own um, subcategory. So if we go to manage here, object styles, I'll create a new object style, and this one will be um, opening symbols. And obviously I can set my line weight then, colour, but more importantly, in the project I'll actually be able to control um, the visibility of that. So you'll notice here the subcategory has been put on opening symbol. And of course I could save this and give it a name, but just for speed here, I'm going to go ahead and load this into my shaft, yep, which is this one here. I'll just say no there. Okay, so that's in. So what I'm going to do now is just constrain it. Um, now what I want to do here really is ideally constrain it to the um, extrusion geometry. Like that. And of course I'm locking each one in because whatever the extrusion does I want this opening to do as well. We'll save that and we'll load and close. Okay, so obviously we can't see a great deal of difference there, but now if I go into perhaps the second floor and we slice a section, I've got to obviously remind myself of where I cut that hole, so let's select one of the beams here, back into the second floor fr uh, framing plan, there it is there. So if I s uh, basically elevate that with a section, let's just reverse that. We are. Okay, you can now see I've got the shape handle there. Now, of course, that's quite nice because then you can just manipulate that, move it where you like, use the shape handle to update it, or of course, you can start to pump in your own sizes. Yep. And as I say, the shaft opening is obviously limited really to um, creating openings in uh, no normal floor slabs and it has to be vertical. This opening that I've just shown you here we can then do pretty much anything we like with. Now, one of the nice things is, from an analysis point of view as well, if I go into the analytical model, obviously it punches out a hole through the analytical plates, but if I go to adjust analytical, and I want to remove builder's works openings, which is ideally where I'd be using this sort of thing, if I click on openings, you can see very easily I can get in there and deactivate those structural openings, including this, this opening I put in here. Yep. So if that's the Builders Works opening, I can just say take it out of the analysis model. Okay, hope that's been useful. And don't forget that you can actually have a look and read up on the notes, which is at revitstructureblog.wordpress.com. Okay, thanks very much.